Welcome to You in HD, your identity in higher definition with Pastor Eric Miller. Join us in our journey of faith in God by taking an in-depth look into the Bible's authority and sufficiency to guide us in our Christian walk. Discover your identity in Jesus Christ today. How you doing, everybody? Uh, not been a great past few weeks for me dealing in, uh, dealing with just so much mental anguish and affliction, uh, depression, of course. But it's no excuse not to come to tell you that um, I'm making my way with the Lord. The Lord has always given me strength to, to push through. And in no time am I sleeping on the job without studying and always researching. So today we're going to continue in um, the judgment of America. But we're going to take a close look at exactly what was a serious sin. Okay. What was Nineveh's sin against God? Now, to understand that, we have to understand who Nineveh is. I mean, they're, they're, they're mentioned in the Bible through, throughout, of course, the, the Old Testament. And there's, there's barely any remnant of it today. If you understand God's prophecies and how he has destroyed everything that he says has, has, that will come to pass, has come to pass, and Nineveh was so wasted and destroyed by the decrees and declaration of God that barely any information about their culture is it's all the stuff that you learn we're learning that we know about it now only came recently I mean literally it was wiped out of the history books for a while we knew it existed but where was it you know we knew where well we knew where it was but where was it you know it was like where's Waldo where did they vanish to you know when God tells you something will come to pass and he brings the warning there is no other way to escape that truth. That's true today as it was back then, as it will be for tomorrow. God is ever changing and he does not play favorites. And if he uses you as a rod of discipline, that's a country or a nation that which he uses uh, Assyria for and he has used them for, they are now under that same purview that happens when, God's, when God uses you you are now under those commandments and under the, 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 the statutes that he governs the very people that you're disciplining. When I'm saying you, I mean in a na as a nation. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking as though you are a nation of people right now listening, okay? So if you're kings and queens, you listen that that's what was happening with Assyria. That's what he used. God has used other nations as rods of his anger. And when that happens, they now are covered with, okay, now that that's happened, now that I'm using you, he lets them know. It wasn't because of your strength that you was able to take my city. It wasn't by your strength you was able to take Judah. It wasn't by your strength you was able to take Jerusalem. It's because I, the God of Israel, allowed it. And I strengthened you and weakened them. He really makes sure that people get that. Because otherwise, there is no getting it. You couldn't sack Jerusalem even if you had 60,000 nuclear missiles. Not a single one of them would go off or even land near Jerusalem. God did not want it to happen. That's the truth. You have to understand how God works. He supplies those things. When he opens the door, he's the one that's got the key. He's the one that can close the door. He's the one that can actually wall the door up, take the doorknobs off, destroy the creases, wall it all the way over, and you'll never see that door again. God has that ability. We should know that. The thing to understand is, and, we're, and of course, you know, we're in Jonah. In chapter 2, Jonah prays, which I think is amazing. Because at that time, at the end of chapter 1, he gets swallowed by the fish because he tells the fishermen, look, throw me overboard to save your lives. It, that was a great repentant moment for, for, for Jonah. And I, I think that was perfectly sacrificial. I think it was a good thing to do. It's an amazing, and, and, and you, it's a stretch, but to, to see that he was dumped in the water, that's amazing. Because, you know, water proves a lot of stuff, right? It drowns, it kills, baptism with water. It's, it's a lot of good symbolism in that. But we're not going down that road. You'd have to stretch it, which I cannot do. I'm just saying I see a little bit of it in there. I dump, dump him in the water. He comes back out. He's ready to go. The fish coughs him up. I'm just trying to speed through. But chapter 2 is definitely worth a good read. Man, if I have to read it, I will, Lord, but I'm just telling you it's a good read for you to read to understand. 
and maybe we should just, all right, I get it. Let's take a peek. You know it ain't no good unless we can open up the fresh word of God and take a peek to see. Oh, good. Chapter two is not that not not too, too long, so it won't eat up too much time of your time. But any time with God is always good. Look at my spectacles of reading. All right. Chapter two. See how to see how the Lord is. I would love to just skip through this and kind of go to the meat and potatoes. But the Lord is so good. Nothing is better than reading this word of God. Nothing. Nothing is better than this. This is where it's at, my brothers and sisters. This is where. We become the rubber meets the road, per se. This is where, you know, God puts it, puts the Bible in our hands and it's got to walk. It's got to walk in our life. So let's read. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, from the stomach of the fish. And he said, I called out of my distress to the Lord. And he answered me. I cried for help from the depth of Sheol. You heard my voice. For you had cast me into the deep into the heart of the seas, and the current engulfed me. All your breakers and billows passed over me. So I said, I have been expelled from your sight. Nevertheless, I will look again toward your holy temple. Water encompassed me to the point of death. The great deep engulfed me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. I descended to the roots of the mountains. The earth with its bars was around me forever. But you have brought up my life from the pit, O oh Lord, my God. While I was fainting away, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came to you into your holy temple. Those who regard vain idols forsake their faithfulness. But I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving that which, I've, which I have vowed I will pay Salvation is from the Lord. Then the Lord commanded the fish and it vomited Jonah up unto the dry land. You know, I'm thankful to God the Lord has laid in my heart to read that because there's a lot of there's a lot of meat in this. Most importantly, I believe we can understand what vain idols. And I think he said that very interesting. I love the way Jonah had put that. Let's read that again. While I was fainting away, I remember the Lord and my prayer came to you and to your holy temple. Those who regard vain idols forsake their faithfulness. That's happening right now today. Many are sacrificing their faithfulness putting it all in voting. Now, this is not to go against voting or saying that it's terrible. I've, I've always held to the fact that I don't think a Christian can vote. I don't believe we should vote. And the reason why is because of our biases and the fact that we are responsible for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Being a former Trump supporter, the fact that I had so many brothers and sisters coming to me saying, Eric, you can't vote for that man. Look at what he done. And I use that same tired argument that many others use right now. Well, he's against abortion, but he's also for lying, abusive speech, hatred, strife, divisions, adultery, which we all know uh, uh, if you hate someone, that's just equal to murder. We all know that. And bigotry. The sins are too much. All the... You, a lie can get a whole nation murdered and destroyed. All those people, including the babies and everybody, don't think a liar's tongue doesn't kill. Satan murdered the entire human race with a lie. And Adam condemned us, the entire human race, with a lie. Go back to Genesis chapter 3. All begins right there. All of everything that we are as human beings begins in those precious, those precious beginning days on this earth. We weren't even long on this earth before death came with that lie. The devil has been lying for years, years. He doesn't stop. He continues he continues, he continues, he continues. There is no break. He doesn't take a break. 
and we continue to feed our idols. What are our idols that we're feeding? The very guilt that we carry in this country is a lack of faithfulness to God by trying to feed our idols. The things that we worship, we worship the things of, of this world that cannot feed us. We go in the voting booths, we go on our social media sites, we go to uh, our, our meetings and we go to our cubicles and we try to create voters when we should be making disciples. Nowhere in the, in the Bible do you see the Lord take, participate in politics. It, the very foundation of politics itself doesn't work because the issue is not that politics is bad, it's the human being that's burnt. It's us. You want to change how policies work? You have to reach the person. And until you're sitting next to Trump or Biden or whoever, unless you're directly talking to them, things will continue to roll. Unless you're talking to someone that talks to someone that talks to them, the policies continue. Are there believers in Congress? I would hope so. I cannot confirm or deny that they are there. What I can tell you, they're outnumbered by evil. They're outnumbered by a system that isn't built to help anyone. At best, it mitigates the, the, the damage that could happen. That's at best. That's the best we can hope for. What's the minimum amount of damage we can do to human being and all of humanity under this government and under this service? That's it. The truth of how you help any nation belongs in its citizens. It belongs in you. It belongs in me. And we are the mover and shakers. And a vote won't change it. Repentance will. Look at my, I use my, my, my politics. Y'all should vote for me in the next election when I, I get up there with the same fingers and, get, and lose badly. But anyway, you want to change a nation? You want to change a nation to get it off its, off its high horse, get it off, off the pride? You have to reach the people. Because your representatives represent the people, supposedly, allegedly. The only way that those Republicans and Democrats and progressives, independents, uh, whoever, any, the only way they can work, feasibly work, is if their base is screaming loud as heck. I'm talking about Super Bowl level loud. I'm talking about World Series level loud. I'm talking about whatever it is you cheer on to where you almost scream your larynx broken. That kind of loud to where they can't help but to address it. Until that happens, nothing changes. When we read here in chapter 2 of Jonah, and it's, it's only not, uh, 10, it's only 10 verses. Those 10 verses show the, a, a repentant heart. It shows what we should be saying, turning away from our idols, our vanity, the things that we hold dear that's physical in our hands, you know, our so-called political systems. We're no longer part of the system. God pulled us out of the world and then placed us back in, not to put us back in the machine. We're there to disassemble the machine. Yes. We're there to point out, hey, that cog is we is squeaky. We got to do something about that cog. If God calls you to go get into that cog space, go do it. Amen. But remember, we cannot taste, touch, or interact in such a manner that we become corrupted again. That's exactly what we're talking about right here. Those who regard vain idols forsake their faithfulness. We go, well, you know what? I want to be a politician. I want to go, and it, and it starts off that easy. I'm, it really does. I want to go, I want to do the right thing. I want to go into politics, and I'm going to run, and I'm going to run a Christian campaign. I'm going to stand with God. I'm going to stand firm with God, and I will not move. I'm not going to move from where I'm standing, and I'm going to push the needle. The problem is you got to go back into the system. 
got to go back in the system. And the system is set up to, what are you going to do for me? That system is always there. It won't go anywhere. What are you going to do for me? What will you do for me? And you may think these small favors that you're doing to get you in office. Them favors come back. They got costs on them. And if you think the devil won't come around you, he has no fear of you whatsoever. He does. He fears Christ, not you, not me, none of us. But when we look at our idols, when we look at our idols, let's take a look. Let's go look. At, we're going to look in. You know, we got to look into the Strong's. I always highly, uh, you get some, get a Strong's dictionary. It's beautiful. It helps. Habel, the emptiness of vanity, unsatisfactory, altogether vain. Isn't that amazing what he's calling it? The emptiness or vanity of what? The breath, the vapor, something that is easily dismissed and dying and gone. Not even real. The emptiness of it. Regard our vain idols. A uselessness. The word, the word itself is shav, it looks like, or saw, or shav. So shav habel, the emptiness, the desolating, the destructive evil that is what? That passes through it, the uselessness of it, the very shallowness of it. Wow. The lying. The lying, those white lies that can get you. Well, if I just lie and say I, I, I'm liberal, but I'm really not, and that gets me in the door, somebody's going to remember, hey, you're a liberal. You said you were a liberal, and gosh darn it, you need to own up to that. Now you, now you, now you got a problem with conscience, and you got a problem with your character. Now you got a problem. Because to be a man of your word means you can't lie. But here it says what? They have forsaken their faithfulness because they wanted to give regard to their Shava Habel. They wanted to give regard to the uselessness of their lies, deceit, guile. Wow, man. The emptiness of falsehood, worthless and empty speech, worthlessness of conduct. They, we are going to regard our emptiness and uselessness of our tongues to try to change a system and none of it will change. Did you see the Lord making that very clear? It's empty. It's a breath. It goes out and it's gone. It has no nourishment. It doesn't fix. It's the nothingness, the emptiness that we regard and give this world and the system of this world. We think that if as a Christian, if I cast my vote, it will change the system. It's empty and vain. It will not change it. Prayer will. But notice, God doesn't give us a back door. He doesn't make exceptions for us. Do you notice that? He doesn't give out except, well, you know, Ted Cruz says he's a Christian, so you know what? I'm going to let him get up there and tell some lies to move the system, to grease the wheels, so to say. Mark Rubio's a Christian. I'm going to go ahead. He cites, you know, Christian verses every day on his Twitter account. I'm going to go ahead, and God's going to, uh, I'm going to allow him grease the wheels. That time's over. Time was never good. The minute Christ came on this earth, everything was demanded to repent and turn back. That means everybody that has the Christian logo above their head and they read their Bible Monday morning and they enter into the chambers of, the, of, of, of Congress and government, whether that's a government worker cleaning up a trash bin to the highest office itself of the, of the POTUS. We, they are designed and built. If we are Christians, we have to lead by the Bible. We cannot lead by our empty, useless speech that is not with God. Let's read it again. But I listen to this. Those who regard vain idols forsake their faithfulness. Many have had to compromise who they are as Christians, it to stay in office. That's not how we do it, baby. We cannot do that. We got to stay strong. That's the only way it works. 
here, I was going to thank you, Holy Spirit. I was going to skip past chapter two for time's sake. And yet, he, thank God. See, even I went after the vain idol. I went after it. You see it clear as day. Let me, for the sake of expediency, and let, let's move through the time so I can get to the meat and potatoes of the problem. I was about to skip the real problem of, uh, that is the meat and potatoes themselves. That's the issue, the person eating them. I can cook the best meal in the world, but if the person that eats it is evil, it doesn't matter. He can, he can tell Eric, that was a great steak, and go out and murder people. The person has to change. Notice this interesting little thing. We go back to Jonah in chapter one. Let's let's go back here. Let's you 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 have to admit you got to go back and look at the irony of this. Now listen to this. So then he said to them, to, "Oh, say sorry. This is when the the, the 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 Lord hurled the storm at them." And and verse four. Okay, in chapter one, verse four, Jonah, the Lord hurled a great wind onto the sea and there was a great storm on the sea so that the ship was about to break up. Then the sailors became afraid and every man cried to his God and they threw the cargo, which was in the ship into the sea to, to lighten it for them. So they cried out to their what? Their Shavah Habel. They, they regarded their idols. They went to their gods. They said, Lord, help us. Whatever God that they were praying to started throwing stuff out. At this point, they're panicked, right? Minds of America right now, we're all panicking. How do we get past COVID-19? How do I get a job again? How do, I, how do I get this stuff to work? How do I get my life back, Lord? I get it. I get it. Every Christian's going through it. Every non-believer is in, we're in the same boat as these men, just as Jonah was. Everybody is saying the same thing around us. Tell me your non-believing friends have not said, I just don't know what to do. I've done everything I can. I don't know what else, where else I can go. I don't know how to fix this. I don't have money coming in. I don't know what to do. Help me. I, and they're doing everything they can. They're going to Pilates classes. They're going to Planet Fitness. They're doing yoga. They're doing Sudoku. They're watching Fox News. They're watching everything. They're getting involved in voting because it's a distraction. They are doing everything that the world gives them to tell them they have peace, but they're still frantic. And they're throwing on anything that they can to try to give them some peace while the whole ship is rocking. And listen to this. But Jonah had gone below into the hold of the ship, laid down and fallen a sound asleep. Now, you know, that symbolism and the direct correlation to Christ can't escape us. Because Christ did the same thing. Why? He, ain't, he wasn't concerned. He's God. He wasn't concerned about the, about, the, about, about the river. He wasn't concerned about the sea. He wasn't concerned that it was going to sink. These men, oh yeah, very real threat. And Jonah's down there sleeping because why? Unfortunately, he ain't resting because he's tired. He's resting because he feels, hey man, I just dodged God. It's all good. I'm saved. I'm one of the I'm one of the predestined. I'm an Israel. Man, I'm all right. I'm good to go. I'm I'm gonna lay down here and call it a day. I just ran from God. So the captain approached him and said, How is it that you're sleeping? Get up. Call on your God. Perhaps your God will be concerned about us so that we will not perish. Did you see that weird, strange, beautiful, beautiful verse there? Perhaps, perhaps your God, they've already prayed that they're, they're, they already prayed to their idols. Nothing happened. <laughs> they're probably the, the ship went was almost about to sp sp spill over more than likely the waves probably went so high went way above way above way above all the sails and then like oh lord that didn't do it whatever the idols were it wasn't working so the captain went down and said jonah get yourself up man what's wrong with you don't c can you talk to your god maybe he's listening because theirs wasn't their their hop their shava habel was not listening but Jonah, oh Jonah, each man said to his mate, come let us cast lots so that we may learn on whose account this calamity has struck us. So they cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. Look at God giving out all these, God's giving out all these symbols and signs. It's, not, it's that guy. I want him. 
Casting lots is literally like shooting dice. Can you imagine that in the middle of the storm, you got this ship riling and rolling and they're falling down and sliding down the deck. You got goats and chickens. You got feathers flying everywhere. The, the rain is pouring through. The wind is whispering through their hair. It's almost, it's probably trying to break the bow and the sails are already half tore off. And you got them rolling dice. We need to figure out what's happening because none of their idols is working. So they go into the bare bones of literally, this is the equipment equivalent of calling the Psychic Friends Network. This is the equivalent of him saying, Miss Cleo, can you can you help me? Can you help me? Please, we don't know what's is it one or is it Willie? Is it John? Is it Jacob? Is it is it is it Chin Willis? Who, who is can you give us some help? They went far, they went to the bottom of the barrel. At this point, if they could have played Monopoly and, and whoever won was going to give them the, the insight of why this happened, they would have done it. But they did know something. Their spirit was disturbed. Remember that. Nobody can deny God. Let's go to Romans real quick. I won't waste your time. It's always a beautiful time to go on Romans. Nobody can deny that God is real because he gave us all the same things to love that. You got to hold on while I keep my place. We'll go to Romans 1, verse 17. For in it is the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written, but the righteous man shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all the ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which is known about God is evident within them, for God made it evident to them. For, the, for, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature has been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made so that they are without excuse they right now they are seeing the absolute invisible attribute of god in that storm the mighty hands and fists of god is smacking that ocean and is damn near killing them remember that phrase listen for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness, their vain idol worship, their unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Those men chose to, to worship their idols over the truth of God because they knew enough to start casting lots. It's a Jewish tradition. They cast and lie. Let's gamble at this point. The idols ain't working. We know that a God is at, is at work. We know a God is at work. It ain't ours, but maybe this guy Jonah, he's the only guy left that we ain't tried. Let's cast some lots. And God, because what is known about God is evident within them. That means their conscience. They can't escape it, but they can suppress it. They can act like, oh, Lord, it, 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 that's just coincidence. That's just luck. That's, that's how you suppress the truth. You go by denial. You go by de de delusion. And then you just flat, just start dumping the truth. In. You just start throwing it out. You just don't care no more. But he made it evident to them. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness, because that which is known about God is evident within them that God made it evident to them. How? For the since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature has been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made, so they can so they so that they are without excuse. There's no excuse. They see God slamming his fist into that, into that ocean and waves probably as big as the skyscrapers of New York, just as high as you can see, and this tiny little fishing boat, and they're just seeing all of this, and it's like, Lord, have, I, we, we've tried everything. Let's throw some dice. It's got to do something. And here comes Jonah. Captain's bringing Jonah up. And now we got a problem. 
Then he said to them, tell us now, on whose account has this calamity struck us? What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? You know why those, those questions got asked? I'm burning up right now, brothers and sisters. You got to excuse me. Oh, there's my, this is my, this is my, when you sweating like a Baptist preaching. That's what that is. Yes, I know my, I have my, uh, this is my, one of my, mom's my, my, one of my last of my mother's gifts is kind of like my idol here and even i'm not worshiping but it's 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 a nice little coat it's like a sweater and i wear it when i feel when i want when i want to feel secure that's true i do it i love it it don't bring no faith but i like wearing it and today i'm wearing it because it gives me a little bit of peace but it also is bringing some sweating but look at that what are you Where? what occupation where do you come from what's your country from what people are you? Man, they just gave him, they just asked about his voter's registration. Where do you vote at, Jonah? Where do you, wait a minute, what time I, where do you vote at? Who's your people? Where do you come from? Where are you, who is your, where's your country? Now listen to this. I am Hebrew, and I fear the Lord God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. He confessed the truth. Flat out, we just read it in Romans chapter 1, flat out. We, they know why, because there's a God in Israel. God ain't never hid that. He's never hid. There's a God in Israel. There's God right here. You want to talk to talk to my people? They'll tell you all about me. That God of Israel right here. That's me. Then the men became extremely frightened, and they said to him, How could you do this? Notice the truth is now sitting right in front of their face. No more excuses now. You notice that, right? Now the excuse is out the window. They ain't got none. Now that they know that man comes from God's people. That man right there, not us, not, not Willie over there, that man right there, that man knows God. And panic and fear entered their body. Long story short, we know what happens after that, right? Jonah says, hoist me up, cast me into the, cast me into the sea. Pick me up. LeBron James me into the sea. Make a, make a three-point shot. Do it. Do what you got to do. Get, get me off this ship. To save your life, brothers, brothers and sisters, dump me over. You can see the symbolism. Not a lot. Just a little bit. I won't touch, I'll touch it. That's as far as I'll touch it. But I like that. I am Hebrew. And I fear the Lord God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. The very thing that that ship embarked from and the very thing that, that that almost about to destroy that ship is the sea that God created. And those men knew for a fact this man is telling the truth. You can't get around a non-believer when, when, all, when all hell is breaking loose around them, when the devil is, running, is marching in the streets, taking applications from people that don't even want to get hired. They, don't, they can see it. They can't run from it. They can't run from God. Verse 20, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature has been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made, so they are without an excuse. You'll hear the intelligent design. You'll hear all kinds of craziness from scientists or whatnot. But every man will try to deny God. Every one of them. We'll run like Jonah from God's purpose and calling on our life, and many will try to run from God to try to make sense of everything in this world. But you cannot escape God. You cannot escape the truth. You cannot escape the, the, the truth that you got to repent and to be saved. You need Jesus Christ. Just as, and let me tell you what happened. Notice in verse 2, he backs up what he said when he says, I'm a Hebrew in verse 9 in chapter 1. Listen to this, those who regard vain idols forsake their faithfulness, but I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. He did that by saying, I am a Hebrew. I fear the Lord God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. He said in verse 12, when he said to them, pick me up and throw me into the sea, then the sea will become calm for you. For I know that on account of me, this great storm has come upon you. Do you not understand, brothers and sisters, that we are in a problem in this country 
because we have not shared the gospel. We've shared religion, our political beliefs, our liberal beliefs, our social uh, socialism beliefs, our capitalism beliefs, what we what, what we believe in, in fantasy football, what we believe is the best cooking show, what we believe is the best chef, what we believe is the best clothing outlet. We've shared every opinion you can imagine, but we haven't shared the gospel. We haven't. Look at them debates. You can't find a Christian that is standing on Christ in any one of them debates. You can't find one of them. They can claim it all day long. Every one of them sit up there and starts lying. Lying. You can't be a Christian and just be lying to each other, especially to each other. They should be talking directly to us. Hey, man, y'all need to, this country has failed. We have failed, God. We have failed you. We need to all repent. We need to, and that's another, that goes to the next episode. I'm sorry, I almost went there. I almost gave away the candy, and it's not even Halloween yet, but I'm not going to do it. That'll be in the next episode. But you understand, we got to put away all that. We can't just be telling that stuff to each other. You can't get up in Congress and just be lying and thinking it's cute. It's not cute. We can't do it. It's bad enough. Let me tell you something. I have been alive for a lot of years. A lot of you, I heard a lot of people with my lies. Mom, dad, wife, kids. I've done a lot of damage. And I've repented of it. And the only way to stop it, the only way to cure sin is with Jesus Christ. Not because I hate it. Yes, I hate lies, cheating, stealing, murder, unreconciliation. I hate it all. But unless I bend the knee to Christ and let him get in, and I have to let him because guess what? He ain't going to force himself on me. He ain't going to do it. There's got to be a submission. Could he do it? Absolutely. Could he force me to be exactly the upstanding citizen that he says, I want you to be the representative of Eric that says the exact same thing I want to say, and everybody will be able to follow you, and I'll be strict and red. I'll be just, just, I would be the best thing walking. I would be telling no more stories, no more lies, no more nothing. I'll be the greatest guy ever. Problem is, we got to submit. Did you see? Regarding vain idols. Part of that is pride, not submitting, thinking that somehow you can do better than God. Somehow you think your vote can do better than you sharing the gospel. That's regarding vain idols. That is the Shava Habel. That's what I'm guilty of. That's what you're guilty of. And only by the sake of Jesus Christ have we been forgiven for those. But we can't live in them. We have to prove our faithfulness, not in the voting booths, but on the prayer floor. We have to prove to the God, not the world, that we seek to see this country safe and saved for the amount of time it has left, not by choosing our leaders, but by choosing the king. That's the only way it works. I hope you pray for this nation. I hope you pray for whoever's in leadership. I pray that you do not cast a vote. If you look at your heart and notice that it's biased, you bet not, because that goes on your record. That goes on me. That goes on you. That means we're supporting lies. We can't do it. We have no business, but we have every business getting on our knees praying. Cause let me tell you something. God's will is a beautiful thing to be aligned with, but it is a terrible thing when you're going against him. And it don't take a genius to figure out what we have been doing in this country for a long time. The judgment has come to America, and it's going to play itself out the rest of this year. 2020 has God has been God's just minorly touching the world and spinning it from one inch, and we see what happened. Imagine when he spins it. It is going to be, a, it's going to be things that, that only the Bible can be able to tell you to walk us through. So I'm telling you, don't be afraid of COVID-19. Be afraid of God. That's biblical. Be afraid of what he'll do, not what it'll do. Because if you can survive COVID, you won't survive God's wrath, and you won't survive God's punishment, and you won't survive God's judgment. You got to preach and teach the gospel. That is your job. That's my job. That's not exclusive to your pastor. It, it, he got nothing to do with it. It's you. 
you brothers and sisters. I love you very much. Thank you for keeping me in prayer. Those that have surrounded me in prayer to keep me fighting through my depression and not giving up and still been able to get me to this episode. That took, I, you, my pastor used to say always, you can tell when someone prays for you because you get that injection of strength and, 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 and extra support. Not that God doesn't give it to you, but it, you just get that sense that when your people are praying for you, it just lifts you up. I feel that. I feel that from you, and I thank you so much. Feel it in a spiritual sense. I don't know if I feel it, but I definitely know it's, it's happening. And I love you very much. I'm technically on Facebook jail again. I'll tell you more of that on another episode. But it's going to be posted on Instagram. It's going to be posted on my YouTube channel. It's going to be somehow get it. It's going to be on my podcast for free, of course. So you can find me everywhere on a podcast. I'll send across Twitter. But there's no excuse. There's some way or somehow I'll find a way to get you the truth of the Lord. Because we all deserve to hear the truth of the Lord. We got to hear, especially in times like this with anxiety and of depression and suicide, is that it's all times high. The cure to all of alien humanity will always be Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, I love you very much. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you next episode. You have just listened to You in HD, your identity in Jesus Christ with Pastor Eric Miller. This ministry is made possible by your thoughtful prayers and donations. Join us each week as we continue to explore our Christian identity in Jesus Christ. May God richly bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.